All right. Hey guys. Dan from Headwaters Kayak. Welcome back to the channel. I'm out here at Lodi Lake today, and the boat I'm in is the brand new Stellar S14 High Volume. So very similar to the G2, just scaled up, fattened up, geared for a little bit larger paddler. Let's go find some calm water, hang out and talk kayaks. Let's do it. Skag up, I've got a cross breeze. I've noticed myself having to paddle a lot harder on the left side to see the boat wants to turn up wind. But if I give it a little bit of skag, boom. Straightens the tracking right out and we can go crosswind, even with like just half of a skag down. It doesn't take much to keep these boats running true. One of the things that's really unique about the S14 G2 in the multi-sport layout is it comes with a controllable skag here on the side, but it also comes with a retractable rudder on the back. If I wanted, I could flip that down and steer with my feet, so it gives me lots of options. You really just augment your steering with that rudder. And what do I mean by that when I say augment your steering? It means I'm still sweeping, I'm still edging, I'm still using my paddle for steerage, but I'm augmenting it with my rudder. So if I'm doing a sweep stroke to the left, I give it a little bit of left rudder, and I can control how far my boat drifts just by playing with the angle of the foot pedal. So it's a little bit more to get used to, but if you spend some time with it, it becomes second nature. And what you'll find is you can really just make your boat do anything you want. Like say here, I'll actually put my foot pedal to the left and draw on the right, and the boat just slides sideways, really cool. So there's all sorts of fun stuff that you can do with it. I'm not saying you, you need to, you should, but you can, that's always fun. All right, so we made our way out of the wind. Hopefully you can hear me talk a little bit better now. Okay, so they have the 14 G2, which has been a hugely popular boat for them. So much so that they came out with the 14 LV G2, and at the same time, they came out with a high volume version of the S14. So it's a family now. We've got a small, medium, and large, and they're all very similar in the way they paddle. They're just really designed towards different people. The S14 LV being a little narrower, a little sleeker, a little lower profile for those smaller paddlers. The G2 is fairly roomy. It's probably the size that would fit me best at 6'2", 220 pounds. And then the HV, which is really designed for bigger paddlers. Even I feel a touch small in it. I've got the foot pedals almost halfway up, so 34 inch inseam, you could probably fit a 38 inch inseam, no problem. As far as the cockpit length, I mean, it's just massive. It's almost like a recreational cockpit. It's almost as big as, if I'm comparing it, it's bigger than like a Adelina Equinox, definitely bigger than a Sitka XT, because uh, it's wider, it doesn't have as much of a keyhole, but I really do have to splay out in order to get my legs to lock in. It's a great idea to sit in and see what works for you. But if you're using this video as a reference tool, just know I'm six foot two, 220 pounds, tons of room, like I can get my feet out without hitting the deck. My extra large skirt fits on here, but it's definitely a stretch. I might actually go with an XXL skirt for this particular boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the overall stats for this boat right here. You've got the length, you've got the width, you've got the weight, you've got some deck height, cockpit dimensions, fairly roomy boat. I think this was a really smart boat for Stella to come out with because there's not a lot of big guy boats in this kind of recreational touring transition zone. A lot of the boats out there Four bigger people are like the Sandpiper 130 or something like that with a big open cockpit, or you're limited to sit on tops. You know, the Eddie Line makes a Sitka XT, which is also geared towards larger paddlers, but it's not quite as roomy as this. I paddle that XT quite a bit and it fits me like a glove. Um, I think even up to like maybe 250 pounds, that's a really good boat. Six foot four, it's kind of in that range. But I feel like this gives a little bit more room even than the XT does. So somebody that's in the 275 range, maybe even 300. I, I'd love to, you know, get some actual feedback from larger people in this boat to hear what you guys think. Just going off of my experience in boats, this is going to be an ideal boat for somebody on the larger side of the spectrum. I would say at 220 pounds, I'm on the small side of what this boat can handle. Stability on it feels huge. It's got a real flat bottom and a huge secondary edge. It does have a soft chine, so it rolls to that edge pretty quickly, but the primary feels really solid, super stable, and then it rolls hard onto a secondary edge. 
it almost feels like more of a hard chine boat where it has a defined kind of clunky motion and that's because the, the, the whole profile of this boat is really like this it's rounded but it has a big flat section right underneath my butt all that width right at the back it feels crazy stable like i don't even in the last video i was teaching you guys how to brace i don't feel like i even need to do that there's so much volume so even compared to maybe like a sandpiper 130 i would say this might even have a higher primary stability just because of how low you sit in it i think i mentioned it already but i'm in the multi-sport layup today which has the carbon kevlar hole fiberglass deck sorry carbon aramid hole aramid and kevlar are kind of synonymous it's just kevlar is a brand dupont name for the material but i as far as i understand it's a identical material just you know who depends on who makes it like all stellars it has a really easy going nature fast glide quick to accelerate it doesn't take much effort to get this thing up to speed also like many other stellar boats you'll notice that if i'm in the wind and i stop paddling it wants to turn up wind it definitely is designed to be used either with a little bit of skeg or a little bit of rudder if i'm going straight up wind it goes straight if i'm going sideways to the wind i'm just dialing in that skag to help control my position most people would paddle this with i would say the skag maybe a quarter of the way down and that just firms up the boat firms up the handling all the way down that's going to lock it in and cause the boat to turn downwind but you have all those variations in between so if you're going upwind skag all the way up points upwind you want to go downwind skag all the way down points downwind if you run around sideways to the rim you can run it halfway down and it's going to track true i will say with the skag up this boat is highly maneuverable highly playful just responds to body english so well and it actually feels fairly connected on my hips i think i would definitely put some thin additional padding in just like most of my boats but it's not like the sitka xt where i have to put quite a bit of hip padding in in order to kind of shim myself in i think it's the way the back band sort of wraps around on a stellar kind of hugs your lower butt helps you engage good posture it's not tall and it's not super supportive at least in the stock back band but it does sort of like connect you to the boat a little better if you're looking for more back support in a kayak like this like if you tend to lean backwards and you need something to help you engage better posture i would check out the clamshell seat which is an additional seat pad and an additional backrest that you can mount into this boat um had a lot of people do that and that really takes care of the comfort and it's a nice like mesh breathable material too it's really it's a nice upgrade I just did a talk to a paddling club in Nevada City, and one of the constant themes is the boats are getting heavier, they're harder to use, they're harder for us to load and unload. <laughs> if your kayak's hard to use, you won't use it. You hear the music? It's so funny. Pirates of the Car Caribbean. <laughs> I feel like I can't carry on a trade of body with all this action. I feel like a ton of people got into paddling over the pandemic and got into whatever kayak they could find, know that they love it, and now they're looking for a lighter weight, higher performance option. And I feel like that's really where Stellar is kind of cleaning up in the market right now. Progressing paddler that wants a little more performance, that wants something easy throw and go. Like as I was putting in here, there was this gentleman pulling out a heavy plastic kayak. You could tell he was struggling with it. He wasn't a young man. I would say he was at least 65. And uh, he's like, how much does that one weigh, 60? And I was like, no, this is 35 pounds or whatever. Might be 36, but whatever. And he was just like, can I pick it up? So I let him pick up the front and he was just mind blown. So it, it really does make a huge difference. If you're loading this onto a car or sliding it up on the back of your SUV, that 30 pound difference makes a huge, huge difference. Also having a little bit longer boat, so you're not having to like lift it all the way up and on. You can kind of rest the nose and then push it forward. Having a little bit longer boat helps with that as well. So most people start with their 12 footers and quickly progress up to 14 foot or something like this. I can't get over how just confident it is on the secondary. If you're a bigger guy and you've struggled with edging a kayak because you know you feel like, oh, if I shift my weight, I'm gonna tip over. This kayak really is gonna reward that behavior. If you're somebody that's wants to learn how to do, you know, sweep strokes, edging, draws, play with the uh, you know, the edges of the kayak to really steer and drive it. This is a great one to do that in. 
let me just show you some stuff to help you be more successful as you're playing with this because I think a lot of people get in a kayak and maybe they see me do it and it looks so easy. But the first time you try to do it, it can be a little, you know. So I'm gonna teach you a couple tips. They're gonna help you edge and do sweep strokes more confidently. First thing, remember in the last video, I don't know if you saw the sandpiper video, we we're talking about pushing down on our paddle when we're checking our stability, right? We talked about this. This is our low brace position. Our paddles are flat on the water. So as we go over and push off the water, kind of roll the wrist forward, that's your low brace. So if we're trying to do a sweep stroke and maybe give it a little edge, we're gonna start that stroke by keeping our paddler's box intact, right? Our chest and our paddle are parallel. We're gonna rotate. See how my arms don't collapse. They stay in that paddler's box. I'm gonna catch that up in my toes. And as I plant the paddle in the water up in my toes, I'm gonna pull with my bottom hand, push with my top hand, and I'm gonna think about driving with my right foot to turn the kayak to the left. There you go, it's just a big sweep stroke. All right, again, I'm gonna start flat, put the paddle on my toes, push and pull, make a big arch with my paddle all the way to the back of the kayak. Sweep stroke. This last part you'll notice me doing is a low brace recovery. So as I'm bringing my paddle back to the catch point, of my sweep stroke up here at my toes. Notice how I roll my wrist forward, sweep my paddle forward, and I'm doing a low brace recovery. And that really allows me to feel my edge out because I'm constantly bracing. I'm getting support from the paddle as I do my sweep. And as I'm recovering, my elbows are up and I'm able to push down on that paddle. So it allows me to kind of feel that edge without having to do a sweep stroke and flatten back out as I reposition. I can hold that edge, so I can feel that secondary. Now I'm like talking to my boat, communicating with my boat. It takes a little bit of core strength, but really allows you to spin that boat on a dime. The more you can edge, the faster the boat's gonna turn. But basically what you're doing in essence is kayaks have a keel, right? A V bottom of some sort. And when you put that boat on an edge, it allows that keel to slide across the water a lot easier. So anyway, if you're playing with edges or you want to play with edges, come to a spot like I'm in, real shallow, real warm water, and play with that stuff where you're not afraid to tip over. Sweep, recover. All right, so let's keep the paddle going. Beautiful out here today. I'm so happy to finally be back out here. Woohoo! This thing is so playful for a, for a big boat. It does feel high volume, even for me. It feels like way more than I need, but it's kind of fun. I don't really have to think about it. I know I'm not going over. It's just crazy how stable it is. I can't wait to have this boat at a demo day this summer because I'm gonna have these big guys that historically I see them go out and they're all tense and they're all tippy and they're gonna get out on this and be like, oh, I can do this. This is okay. I'm really looking forward to it. First demo day of the year is May 4th, right here at Lodi Lake. We're doing the annual Lodi Paddle Fest. And then from there, it's almost every weekend from here on out. If you want, uh, check my website. You can message me. I've got a whole list of dates of different demo days that we're gonna be doing over the season. And I'm actually doing some private demos too. If you're interested in paddling with me, you can visit headwaterskayak.com, check out my website. I have a spot on there if you want me to come talk to your club or you wanna to come to Reading and take a lesson or do a demo. I'm finally offering those kind of services. So that really brings us to the last question is, who is this boat right for? That's probably the number one question I have when I'm demoing a boat. It's like, all right, every kayak has a place in the world, but who is this one right for? Who's the S14 HV the perfect kayak for? And if I was gonna identify a customer, I would say, this is where I start stereotyping, so I apologize if it comes across wrong, but somebody who's maybe a little older, somebody that wants something that's lightweight, easy to handle off the water, somebody that values stability because you are sacrificing a little bit of speed compared to the smaller 14. Um, somebody that's on the larger side of the spectrum. So say you're six foot two and maybe 240, this is your boat. But also somebody that's only five foot 10 and 220, but doesn't really feel stable or comfortable in a smaller boat, they're gonna be able to get in this and still feel really, really confident. So it's not necessarily that you have to be a huge person to fit it, but if you want that additional stability and that confidence, but you still need a fast, sleek boat or you want a fast, sleek boat, I mean, who really needs it, right? This is definitely a, a sports car. Um, but I think it would be a good fit for that person. Somebody that wants to have 
speed. Somebody wants to have capacity. Maybe they're hauling gear. Maybe they're hauling um, a picnic or an overnight setup. Great boat for that. Somebody with long legs that values the cockpit with an additional length, an additional width. Like, look, I can paddle this thing with my knees up, no problem. 34 inch inseam, and I still have, I don't know, eight inches before my shins hit the deck. And then as far as layup goes, I guess that would be the last thing to talk about is there's multiple different layups of this boat. So you've got the Advantage layup, which is the best price point. It's a fiberglass layup. It's fairly robust. It's um, a little heavier. I mean, it's still lightweight as far as kayaks go. You know, I think you're probably looking at uh, 30, what does it say, 38 pounds? I'm guessing 39 pounds maybe. And that one just comes with the skag. It does not have the rudder, okay? The next step up is the multi-sport. That's the kayak I'm in. That's the one with the clear carbon Kevlar finish, or sometimes now actually the multi-sports will come with white gel coat as well. But the idea with the multi-sport is it can take a little bit more abuse, it can take a little bit more of a bounce, a little bit more of a shot, and it's gonna hold up really well. So this is, tends to be what I get a lot of my demo boats in, just because I'm dragging around, going to events, throwing them in a trailer. Um, you don't save a whole bunch of weight with the multi-sport layup, it's maybe only a pound, but you do get the rudder and you do get the added durability. So it's a great option. Next up, you have the Excel layup, uh, very lightweight, a little bit more fragile, you know, that's a boat you're definitely setting in the water and then getting into. You're not coming up on shore and, and, and ramming it on the beach. You don't want your weight to hit a hard object or you can damage the layup. Lastly is the Alpha layup, which we sell on occasion. It's a very expensive, very high-end layup, but some people just want the lightest weight option. You know, one of my customers started paddling in her 70s and she's got to be getting close to 90 now. And she doesn't care. She knows how to get in and out delicately, but she wants the lightest weight thing to put up on her Subaru. So that's the perfect boat. It's really, if you want to do the sport and you want to do it long term, it's really hard to put a price on your ability to do it. If it's easy to use, you'll use it. I've been saying that in a bunch of videos, but really that's the deal with these higher end boats. You know, some people watch this video and say, who in the world would spend $4,000 on a kayak? Well, I'm here to tell you a lot of people would because a lot of people do. Um, it's no different than a mountain bike, a carbon mountain bike costing four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. I mean, they go up from there. So it's not really that far of a stretch to think that somebody's gonna spend money on a high performance, high end ultralight kayak. Um, every time I post a video of a lightweight boat, I get something in the comments like, <laughs> only an idiot would spend that much. My Pelican does just great. Well, this isn't for you. <laughs> It might be someday if you stick with it and you age, you might find this is the perfect boat for you. But, uh, I don't know. Well, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out and paddling with me today. I'm gonna get some shots outside the boat. I'll try to slip those in somewhere. Thanks so much for hanging out and paddling with me today. I hope you enjoyed my review of the S14 HV. Um, if there's one word to take away, it's stability. For the style of kayak it is, it is just crazy how far I can lean this boat over without it feeling unstable. Really impressive. Typically when I'm talking about edging, I'm always talking about keeping your nose over your center. You have to This boat would allow you to get away with murder. <laughs> so hopefully you enjoyed that. If nothing else, hopefully you found it entertaining, maybe even a little educating. If you did, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up, leave a comment, do all that stuff. It really does help the channel. I find that the videos that get engagement from you guys really go on to do quite a bit better. Uh, so if you found this video helpful or entertaining, do me a favor, just do all the things, you know, like, subscribe, tell your mom, whatever you want. So thanks so much for hanging out. Until next time, this is Dan wishing you happy paddle. We'll see you on the next one.